St. Preckens are playing from right to left in the first half and they'll be aided by the breeze. In any moment now, the minor final will be underway. There's a couple of changes on the Arogue team from the official programme. We'll give them to you as we go through the game. Referee Normal Queen checks with his umpires and everything is in readiness for the start. The sun beaming down here in Cora Clare. A perfect day for football. And the game gets underway. And Sarog first into the attack. But there is Jerry Garrity, the centre half back. Since St. Brecon's on the attack. Booted out by David McCarthy. Out into the centre of the field. Arog passing the halfway line. Number eight, Keith Malai was fouled, so it's a free to Arog. Free after 18 seconds of the first half. Or 10 metres inside the St. Brecon's half of the field. And the free taker will be Keith Malai. Boots it in left footed. Held inside by Michael Danaher. The referee weighs on the play. Danaher gets the clearance. Out the far side. Out as far as John Garrity. Up towards the right half forward, Des Egan. The ball has crossed the line. The linesman has his flag up and he signals that it's a sideline kick to Arogue. <laughs> Keith Malloy will take the kick. Just in front of the VIP box in the press box at the far side of the field. Booted down deep into the corner. Nice attacking shot over across the face of the goals, but it's held by James Danaher. Danaher boots it right footed under pressure. It's gone over the sideline. Another line ball to Arog. Halfway is between the 14 and 20 metre line. And once again, it's Keith Malai who will take the kick. Oh, the umpire has changed his decision there. The linesman had his flag up at the far side, but now the umpire seems to have signaled that it's a 45, a 45 to Erog. And Keith Malai. Erog doing the pressing in the early stages, but the game isn't yet two minutes old. Keith Malai drills it in left footed. Backs and forwards go up for it, but it's held by the centre half back Jerry Garrity. Gets it out this side of the field. Oh, missed time pass there, which comes to Jer Cahill. Jer, who wasn't named in the original programme, but comes into the side. Down towards Tig Line. It's gone over the sideline. Both sides claiming it. The linesman has signalled that it's going to be a sideline kick. A sideline kick to Arog. It'll be taken by Brian Coffey. Sends it in towards the goals. The referee has penalised one of the Aero players there for a foul on Ger Daly, so it's a free out to Breckens. Peter Kelly will take the kick. Boots, oh, a very short one, but it went past Tiggy Line. The ball is with Frank, with Frank Coffey. Drills it in towards the goals. Held inside by Sean, by Parry Garrahy. Gets it out this side, not a very good clearance. Comes as far as, as Brian Coffey. The hand pass back to, to Brian Coffey. 
Herog on the attack over across the goals, but it's held by the goalkeeper, Colum Hawk. Michael McNamara completes the clearance up past the centre of the field. The ball has gone over the sideline. I think it went off the hand there of John Mooney, the captain of the St. Brecon side. So it's a sideline kick to Herog. Keith Malloy will take the kick once again. A very low one in the centre, in towards Tony McHenry. Soloing to the centre, kicks it right footed in towards the goals. Could this be the opening score? It is held by the goalkeeper, Colum Hawk. The hand pass out to James Danaher. A missed time shot out of defence, and it comes to Declan Tobin. Tobin sends it in towards the goals. Goes off the hands of the full back there, but out comes the goalkeeper, Colum Hawk. Gets it out to John Garrity. Garrity is penalised there for overcarrying. So it's a free in to Erog. Erog doing all the pressing, even though they're playing against the breeze in this first half. It's just over four minutes old, and as yet there's no score in the game. Tony McHenry will take the, the free. It's a very difficult angle, about 15 metres in from the far sideline, just outside the 13 metre line. Could this be the opening score? Tony McHenry steps well back. This will be a, an, in, an in swinger at the way he's standing up to it. Floats it in and a lovely kick there from Tony McHenry. The opening score of the game, a pointed free by Tony McHenry. The angle was very tight, but he floated it straight between the, the poles. The kick out will be taken by Colum Hawk. Gets it out into the centre of the field. Picked up there by Ger Daly. The referee has penalised Ger Cahill, so it's a free to St. Brecon's. Taken by Ger Daly, floats it down the centre. John Mooney, ball breaks away from him. David O'Connor gets it in inside. And back to John Mooney, takes the kick towards the goals, but it's gone to the left and wide. <laughs> the kick out will be taken by the right cornerback, David McCarthy. It won't go as far as he's on 65. The referee has blown the whistle. The referee there, Noel Mulqueen, having a word of warning to the one of the St. Brecon's players. It was the captain of the side, John Mooney. Oh, Francis Corey with the free kick to Erog. Up the far side of the field. Michael Danaher. Since Brecon's on the attack, down into the corner. But it has crossed the line, so it's a sideline kick to Erog. Francis Corey and Jerk Cahill, two of the Erog players, and they have been very busy of late. Last Sunday, they played in the All Ireland minor final for the Clare side, who were beaten by Offaly, and then on Wednesday evening had to play in the semi finals of the minor championship. So, three big games in one week. Play back towards the centre of the field. Keith Malloy for Erog sends it down high, punched out by John Garrity. But it's Erog still on the attack with Jer Curran. Floats it in towards the goals. Fisted out there by Peter Kelly. And it's gone out for a 45. A 45 to Erog. They lead by one point. <laughs> Jer Cahill throws back the ball there to the referee, Noel Mulqueen. And it's Keith Malai who will take the 45. He seems to be the kicker-in-chief in the Arog side. He has taken all the free so far and most of the sideline kicks. He has gained about a metre with this one. He's kicking into a stiff breeze. Those long goal locks flow down along his back as he kicks it in towards the goals. Held inside by Michael McNamara. Gets the clearance, but the referee has... And the umpire has signalled that Michael McNamara had stepped over the end line, so it's another 45 to Erog. And once again, it'll be Keith Malloy. 
Those switches we told you about before the start of the game. Jerk Cahill came into right half back at number 16. Brian Coffey is playing at right half forward. He's wearing number five. Tig line has switched from full to right corner and in the cutter into the left corner. And Michael McCarthy is playing at full forward. Keith Malloy drills it in towards the goal. Held inside by Declan Tobin. He's fouled as he tries to come out with the ball, so a free kick to St. Brecken's. Goalkeeper Colum Hawk. Tees it up with the boot, and it's interesting that I read in the paper during the week that it's one of the decisions that has come from a committee set up to look into Gaelic football, that there'll be no more teeing up of the ball, but that has to be passed by Central Council. But it's Keith Malloy in position, or it's Michael Danaher, the hand pass inside to John Mooney. In towards the goals, Michael O'Brien comes out quick to the low ball, gains position, kicks it over the far side. Ball breaks out to Des Egan. Egan in position, floats it left footed, in towards the goal, hangs in the air. Oh, it breaks down, this could be danger, and it comes off one of the Arog players there as the ball broke to Richard Fitzpatrick. He blasted it in low, but it came off one of the Arog players and out for a 45. That was the best move the Breckens have put together so far in the game. They have yet to score, although they're aided by the breeze. John Mooney will take the 45. Wind assisted. Could he open this St. Brecken's account from this one? Floats it in high, but it curls to the left and wide. So, just gone over 10 minutes in the game. A rogue lead by one point to no score. St. Brecken's finding it very difficult to get into this game. The kick out by Dave McCarthy. Into the centre. The referee has penalised Keith Malai for a push in the back. So a free into St. Brecken's. John Mooney once again will take the kick. He's about a metre inside the Arogue 45. He had the distance from the last one from much the same position. He hadn't the accuracy. He floats this one in. It looks a better one. Yes, and the sides are level. John Mooney, a point from near to 45. So both scores in the game having come from freeze. Sides are level, one point each. Dave McCarthy. Taking the kick out from his 20 metre line. He's in no great hurry. Boots it up into the centre of the field. Keith Malloy feels it. I think he was lucky to get away with that one because it seemed to be a nudge in the back. Floats it in towards the goal. Michael McCarthy is under it. But it breaks to Jerk Curran. The hand pass. A rogue still on the attack. In towards the goals. Nicely fielded by Peter Kelly. And once again he has stepped over the end line the help of a shoulder there from Tig Line, so it's a, yeah. Yeah. it's a 45 to a rogue. The 45 will be taken by Keith Malloy. One point each. He has gained a step or two again with this one. Stands well back, kicking into a stiffish breeze. Kicks it in low. Nice shot in there by Brian Coffey, but it's well fielded inside by the fullback Peter Padre Garrahy. Gets it out this side of the field. Picked up by David O'Connor, back helping out in defence. Sends it down the centre, goes off the hand of Francis Corey. John Mooney has the edge on him. Mooney cutting into the centre. The hand pass out here to Richard Fitzpatrick. A promising looking move in. Can they finish with a flourish? No, but the referee has penalised the right corner forward, Brian O'Loughlin, that he picked the ball off the ground. So it's going to be a free out to a rogue. That was a very promising move by Breckens. When Francis Corey failed to hold on to the dropping ball, St. Breckens had the extra men, but failed to utilise him. Hello there. So it's Dave McCarthy with the free. Sorry? Up the centre, goes by John Mooney. I hear you. It's Des Egan in possession. Egan is fouled a free into a rogue. 
it's, a, it's, it's over the wall really basically you know I would yes now you're coming through much the free taker will be John Mooney is inside the Arog 45 he has accounted for St. Brickens point already. That one was from very much a similar position to this one. Floats it in high, but it's gone to the right and wide. That's three wide St. Brickens have in the game so far. And it must be said they were nearly all from scoring positions. Coming up to the 14th minute of the first half. A very low scoring first half, one point each. Dave McCarthy will take the kick out from the edge of his own parallelogram. Kicks it up the centre. Nicely fielded by John Flanagan. Flanagan falls to the ground and the referee, very strict there, he has penalised Flanagan for holding on to the ball too long. Flanagan seemed to be playing for the free, but the referee was having none of it. So John Mooney... This one is further out than the last two. He got a point from one and was wide from the other. This is a short one. Into Michael Danaher, the return to Mooney again, cutting to the centre. Still going through, it's still Mooney. Takes the left-footed shot and sends it over the bar. So St. Brickens go into a one-point lead. Two points to one. John Mooney having got both of St. Brickens' scores. One came from a free and that one from the left boot of Mooney. Hello. The breeze Hello. seems to have died somewhat. It's not as strong as it was in the early stages of the game. Of course, it's aiding St. Brickens in this first half. Hello, yes. Can you hear me? Herog on the attack with Declan Tobin. Sends it up the far side of the field. Goes off the hand of Jer Curran. Nicely fielded by John Geraghty. The linesman has his flag up. He signals that Geraghty stepped over the line. So it's a sideline kick to Ero. Keith Malai will take the sideline kick. Yes? Sorry? So the referee has blown the whistle and he awards a free out to St. Brickens. Centre half back there, yeah. Jerry Garrity leaves the ball there for the full back, Pari Garrity, to come to take the free. Yes, 35 metres from his own goal, kicks it down the centre. John Mooney goes very high for it, but the ball breaks away from him to Decton Tobin. Out comes Pari Garrity. Nice anticipation by Garrity. Lays it off to Michael McNamara. Kicks it up the centre. Michael Danaher. Drills it down into the corner, down towards Brian O'Loughlin but it has crossed the sideline. So it's a sideline kick to Erog. Okay. The sideline kick will be taken by James Danaher. Sorry? Just over 16 and a half minutes gone in this first half. Just over 16 and a half minutes gone in the first half. So Brickens are leading Erog. Michael Danaher fouled and, and the referee has penalized Danaher for Holding on to the ball too long. The referee is very strict on players holding on to the ball. And I think it will help for the fluency of the game because it will put players under pressure that they'll have to release the ball and keep the game flowing. Well, I thought for a moment there that it was a, f a free to Aero, but it's a sideline kick. The attack is broken up. St. Brecken's now out into the centre of the field, but it's Jerk Curran. The hand pass out to Francis Corey. Corey boots it left footed, very high. The wind holds it in the air. And it's held onto there by Inda Cutter. Takes the shot in towards the goal. The referee has blown the whistle there and he has penalised Inda Cutter for a frontal charge there on Padre Garrahi. So a free kick to St. Reckons. On their 20 metre line. Kick up the centre, goes off the hand of Francis Corey. John Mooney braces back fast to collect it. Nice passing movement here from St. Prickens as John Fennigan cuts through the centre. The right footed shot and sends it over the bar. A nice point there for the, by the midfielder. It was a nice steady build up, some nice passing movements, and Fennigan sent it over the bar to put Prickens into a two point lead. Three points to one.
A bit of a hold up there as the ball hasn't been returned. Now it's returned into that far corner. So St. Brecon's beginning to put on a couple of scores. They started very hesitantly, but have come into the game in the last few minutes and have found the range. The kick-out will be taken by Dave McCarthy. The wind holds it in the air. The referee has penalised their rogue there for a foul on Michael Danaher. So another free kick to St. Brecon's. St. Brecon's have come much more into the game now. They're beginning to put on the pressure. But they'll need some more scores before half-time because they're aided by a strong breeze. Mooney kicks it in towards the full forward, Michael O'Brien. Gains possession, surrounded by two Airog players. I think he played for the free there, but the referee says play on, and it's Dave McCarthy. Gets it out to Francis Corey. Corey goes by John Mooney. Lays it off to Jerk Cahill. Soloing past the centre of the field. Still Cahill in position. Boots it right footed. Nicely right by Jerry Garrity. Gets it out to Kenneth Jordan. Up to Michael Danaher. It's Jared Daly there in position for Airog, and Daly is fouled a free yes. to a free to Airog. The free taker will be Francis Corey. Yes, five meters outside his own forty-five. Ties okay, it up the side of the field. Brian Coffey goes by him. It's Declan Tobin. Down into the corner. Tony McHenry goes by James Danaher. And it's Brian Coffey. Or it's Michael McCarthy wearing number 10. But he's playing it full forward and he gets the point. So just one point separating them once again. Three points for St. Brecon's. Two points for Aero. Tony McHenry has gone in to play it. Right corner forward. He'll be, his marker would be James Danaher. And tag line has gone out to centre half forward. Nicely fielded there by Kenneth Jordan. And he wins himself the free kick. A good sized crowd now filling in here into Cora Clare. As he sends it down into the corner, Brian O'Loughlin. Good afternoon, Ter. But Dave McCarthy is penalised. The county football final replay of 1989. So it's a free into. You join us here. There free into Aero, or free into Breckens. In the first half of and the, the free taker final. will be David O'Connor. Proving to be quite an entertaining game of football. So after 21 minutes, in Breckens lead Aero. Aided by the breeze, kicks it in. The wind swings it towards the corner. All breaks across the Michael O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin trying to cut through the defence, nicely pleased. Makes the kick, but under pressure, and it goes. To the right and wide. John Mooney, the captain, have put the Liston Varna lads ahead. The, the other score remains here, three course, points for St. Brickens, two Stenis points for Aero. Battle it out once again at 3 30. Just two weeks ago, they came here to Cora Clare and the sides ended level after a spectacular. Dave McCarthy will take the kick out. And then the one and only Terence O'Neill coming in to nip in for the vital point. So it all adds up to a great atmosphere. A lot of bunching under the dropping ball, but it's John Mooney who collects the breaking ball. Is, uh, Goes by Ger Daly. Daly persists and knocks uh, it away from him. Michael O'Brien comes from out from his full forward position. Toe to hand. Still Brickens on the attack. Nice kick in towards the goals. Directed in towards Richard Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick keeps it in play, but his kick is blocked down. The traffic is uh, simply Here is very well. Moment, it was described to me by very close the, to the sideline. Uh, Kenneth Jordan fists the down for Brickens. So it's gone over the sideline. It's a line kick for Aero. St. Brickens lead Aero by three points to two after just 22 minutes of play in the first half. I'll be right back in about 10 minutes. Jerk Cahill will take the sideline kick. The uh, 35 metres from his own goal. In the centre. Right, John Flanagan, but it goes off his hand. Brian Coffey booted out first time for Brickens by James Danaher. Francis Corey, the Air Oak centre halfback, races after it. He won't win the position to this one. Richard Fitzpatrick lays it across towards Des Egan. Egan in position. Finds the loose player, Brian O'Loughlin. Across towards John Mooney. 40 metres out from goal. 
sells the dummy to Francis Corey and sends it towards the goals and that's a very nice point. A lovely point by John Mooney and he has scored three of St. Brecon's total of four. So St. Brecon's lead by two points. The kick out will be taken by Dave McCarthy. They're rogue on the attack. <coughs> Jerry Garrity, the center halfback. Across to Michael McNamara. Yes. The referee has awarded the free there to McNamara. I thought for a moment he was saying. Signalling that he was going to give the free to Airog. Right, yeah, uh, or the free to, yeah, yeah. yes, the free to Airog for charging with the ball. And now he has advanced to 10 metres uh, for the cent. So it's a free kick to St. Brickens with John Garrity. Right, okay. Thanks a minute. Bye -bye. Five metres inside his own half. It was intended there for John Mooney, but it's broken up by Airog. And it's Declan Tobin sends Airog on the attack in the cutter. In towards the goals. Well read inside by Parry Garrahy, but then he loses position. Michael McCarthy over towards the corner. Drills a dangerous ball over across the goals. Brian Coffey is under it, but it's fisted out for St. Preckens. Richard Lyne, our tag line, sends it in towards the goals, but sends it to the right and wide. And by my estimation, that's the first wide that Eroke have had in the game. Just under five minutes left to half time. Four points to two, a low scoring first half. Right. <laughs> Column Hawk with the kick out. Not a very long one, although he's aided by the breeze. It's Michael Danaher, sends Breckens on the attack, down towards Richard Fitzpatrick. Been closely policed by Sean McCarthy. Gets his kick in the centre. A promising move here for St. Brecon's as Michael Danaher drills it towards the goals, but it's way off target to the right and wide. Brecon's wasting a lot of chances. They lead by two points, but they could have a couple more scores on that scoreboard. And they might very well need them yet because they'll have to face that stiff breeze in the second half. Dave McCarthy kicks it outfield. Brian O'Loughlin. The referee has penalised O'Loughlin, so it's a free to hero. The free taker would be the left cornerback, Peter Kelly. About 30 metres from his own goal, 15 metres in from that far touchline. it into the centre. It's gone over the line and it's a line ball to St. Brecon's. The breeze which had died somewhat halfway through this first half is gaining in momentum again. A few dark clouds gathering overhead but hopefully they will hold off for the rest of the afternoon. John Mooney goes high for it. Collects it and sends it in towards the goal. <coughs> Brian O'Loughlin turns and shoots. And gets the point. So St. Brecon's go into a three-point lead. Brian O'Loughlin tapping that one over. So five points to two, three points between the sides. Two and a half minutes left in the stopwatch to half time. Sean McCarthy. Jerk Cahill goes high for it, feels it well. Playing attacking role at right half back. <coughs> this is Tony McHenry. Loses position. Has two players there tussle for it. James Danaher and Tony McHenry. The referee blows the whistle. I think he's going to throw the ball up between them. McHenry and Danaher. Danaher gets it out. Out as far as Michael Danaher. Tony McHenry is penalised there for testing the quality of the jersey. 
So it's a free into your og. Or no, are afraid. It's a yes. It's a free to Saint Brecon. 